A team of talented scientists cloned a thousands of years old DNA, and the child born as a result becomes a lab rat. However, no one cares about his emotions, and he struggles to find his place. Dr. Julian Reed is a successful researcher and lecturer in a renowned university. His current research includes the history of Neanderthals, an extinct species which was similar to humans and commonly referred to as the cavemen. Julian gives a detailed lecture on Neanderthals to his students. They used to exist at least 4,000 years ago and had a very strong body structure with exceptional strength. The most popular reason for their extinction is the modern humans with their superior intelligence who competed the cavemen away. But Julian doesn't agree to that. To elaborate his point, he tells the students about the fossil remains of Neanderthals discovered in 1856 in Germany. At that time, different rulers gave different theories about the discovery, but most of them were wrong. But recent scientific studies revealed that every current human has 1-4% to of Neanderthal DNA. So Julian believes that they evolved from Neanderthals and the intelligence they are so proud of might be a trait driven from the cavemen. Whether this theory is true or not, only an actual Neanderthal can tell that, but it's impossible to meet one. But the most astonishing statement Julian makes is that the world's only well-preserved Neanderthal remains are present in this university, which was discovered by one of the board members, Dr. Godwin Thomas. She named him William, after the name of the first scientist who discovered Neanderthal as a separate species. Julian believes that it would be great if anyone can find a way to use the Neanderthal DNA to make a living clone. Julian ends the lecture with this and goes to a restaurant to grab a drink. Suddenly a gorgeous lady walks towards him and introduces herself as Dr. Barbara Sullivan. She has PhD in endocrinology and bioengineering and has been attending Julian's lectures to know more about the Neanderthal. She has been working on the idea of cloning the DNA and made some astonishing progress. She explains how it is possible but it will not be easy or cheap. That's why she needs Julian's help. Julian agrees and takes her to his personal lab. He shows him two samples of stone weapons, one made by humans and one by Neanderthals. And surprisingly, Neanderthals is more precise and well-structured. Julian shares his idea with the university heads, and the Neanderthal project starts right away. It is progressing really fast, and the scientists are just a few steps away from developing the Neanderthal embryo. Beside the project, the relationship between Julian and Barbara is progressing too, and they have developed romantic feelings towards each other. Just a few days before the execution of the embryo fertilization, the university director Bob calls Godwin and asks her opinion on this project. He has asked several authorities and most of them want to continue to the final step. Godwin patiently listens to everything, and at the end she just says that she is not having good vibes about this project. Bob trusts her the most and cancels the project. When Julian and Barbara get this news, they become really devastated, and they can't let their hard work go in vain, so Barbara decides to take a big step and volunteers to carry the Neanderthal embryo. They were about to get married anyway so no one suspects them when Barbara announces her pregnancy. Luckily, everything goes really well and Barabara gives birth to a healthy baby. Once it's done, Julian wants to reveal their successful experiment to the public. He informs Bob that he did everything in secret and the Neanderthal clone has arrived in the world in a healthy body. Julian is going to hold a press conference the next day and invites Bob and Godwin. Bob holds an emergency board meeting to discuss this issue. Some suggest that they should sue Julian and Barbara for doing an unauthorized experiment, but they can't ignore the fact that the experiment is successful and any university will delightfully accept the couple. But if the Neanderthal causes any harm, Bob will be answerable, so it's better to just accept it beforehand. Bob agrees to tell the public that this experiment was done under his supervision and with his permission. The next day, Julian presents the summary of the Neanderthal project. The public is worried about the clone dying and the diseases he may arise due to mutation. In response to this, Julian tells them about the security measures they are taking. No one will be allowed to have direct contact with William, the Neanderthal baby. He will be monitored 24-7 by highly qualified scientists. Moreover, Julian and Barbara aren't genetically related to William, but for the sake of his moral development, they will serve as his parents. From the next day, William gets caged in the lab where he is always surrounded by several scientists and doctors. The public protests against this experiment but Julianne thinks people are just triggered because William didn't turn out to be a dangerous creature as mostly expected. He is no less than a normal child, actually better. He develops faster than other human beings and shows higher intelligence. Soon he learns to walk and talk and gets attached to Barbaroo. She also treats him like her own child. 
but can't interact with him without the protective suit. One day, William falls sick and begs to meet his mom. Julian stops Barbara but she can't stand it anymore and cuddles with William without a protective suit. Luckily, William has a stronger immune system than a normal human being. Therefore, he recovers quickly. Everything is going smoothly, but Barbara starts regretting her decision to make her kid a lab rat. When Julian doesn't agree with her, she decides to call off their marriage and file a case for Willem's custody. Julian reminds Barbara that William isn't her son, but this triggers her even more, and she gets determined to give William a better life. He is no longer a threat, and nothing unexpected happened in his body. The media has also lost interest in this story, so it's time for William to be declared a normal child so he can enjoy freedom. Barbara discusses this matter with Godwin and gets full support. Godwin also helps Barbara continue her job at the university. Besides that, Barbara has started working in a clinic and buys the apartment above it. She takes William to his new house and he can't express in words how happy he is. He is not surrounded by machines anymore and can finally eat and live however he wants. But Julian is still determined to continue his research on the Neanderthals and gets the permission to examine William once a week. After a few days, Barbara admits William into a good school. At first, the principal feels a little reluctant to accept William and asks Julian if they need to take any specific measures. But Julian requests the principal to treat William like any other child. William grows up really fast but the noticeable thing about his development is how practical and straightforward he is. Beside that, he also has a really big appetite. Julian also keeps examining William and helps him learn more about the outside world. The thing that Willem is struggling with is his understanding of human emotions and manipulation, but he really loves his dad and looks up to him. Julian always motivates William to study hard and become a great researcher like his dad. However, life isn't easy for the poor boy. Soon the kids in his class learn about his identity and bullies him by calling him a caveman. William tries to ignore them, but the bullies follow him around. They eventually catch him and start fighting. But William is comparatively stronger than other humans and scares away the bullies. The other kids' parents take this matter to the police and call William a monster who should be kept in a cage. This incident traumatized William and he has lost all of his self-confidence. This is just the start of his struggle. He secretly researches himself and reads other people's opinions about the Neanderthals. Most people call the Neanderthals dumb and stupid species that don't deserve to be revived. William prefers staying at home and spending more time with his parents, but that happiness is stolen from him as well. Barbara gets a boyfriend, which enrages Julian, and he stops visiting William. Poor boy is already struggling with an identity crisis, teenage hormones, and now he has to face the consequences of parents' separation. Even for regular checkups, Julian sends his assistant instead of coming by himself. Barbara doesn't like Julian's attitude and asks him to be a better father, but Julian puts all the blame on her. After a few years, William gets into high school and even makes some new friends. He also starts liking a girl named Judy, who will be performing with him in the school play. She invites William to practice their dialogues at her house, but William has already made plans with his friends. They are going camping. The next morning, they head to a beautiful camping spot. The other boys keep cracking jokes, but William doesn't understand them, as he can't figure out why humans enjoy playing with words. Luckily, his friends are really sweet and also motivates him to get closer to Judy. Maybe after falling in love, he will start understanding human nature in a better way. Later that day, the boys get joined by a couple who also came for camping. They seem friendly and request to join the boys. They sit beside the bonfire and enjoy the atmosphere. The woman stares at William's face really carefully and questions his unique features. One of his friends reveals that William is a Neanderthal. Hearing this, the woman's expressions change and she tells William to return to his own kind. The next day, they go back home, but William can't get over what the woman said to him. After a few days, William gets ready to perform the school play. Judy is really nervous and admires William's ability to stay calm all the time. This makes William get more sure that Judy likes him. At the end scene of the play, Judy kisses William, but he wants to continue it for a little longer. Judy pushes him away and also stops replying to his messages, which proves that she is not interested in him anymore. Poor William also has to experience how a broken heart feels. Meanwhile, his parents are busy choosing a future for him. His school principal believes that William has a unique type of intelligence, and the answers he writes are totally different compared to known forms of intelligence. The principal advises that Willem should memorize the answers so he can pass the regular university test. Julian wants him to get the same degree as him, but Barbara wants his son to choose an average subject and a stable career. 
The decision is left on William, as he has already turned 18. Julian explains that William is capable of more than any university can teach him, so he should get a good degree and work in developing new medicines using his DNA. William agrees with his father and shifts to another house. He fails the first attempt of the university entry test, so Julian hires a teacher named Sarah. She is also Julian's girlfriend but a really mature and polite woman. She starts with focusing on the English language as William gets lowest grades in it. She asks William to read a paragraph from a Shakespeare's play, but William finds it weird to see the world being compared to a stage. He wonders why people use metaphors and not say directly what they mean. Why can't he answer questions with his own opinions? Why is he bound to memorize all the pre-written answers? Sarah tries her best to help him learn, but William fails the entry test again. Julian gets really angry and scolds William. To cheer him up, Sarah takes William for a walk in the woods. They share their interests and William reveals that he likes singing. Though the lyrics don't make sense to him, he loves the rhythm. When Sarah insists, William sings a beautiful song for her. Sarah had a tough childhood and is still struggling with her studies. She is also doubtful about her relationship with a workaholic man like Julian. In such a situation, having a calming person like William is no less than a blessing. William also believes that the time he spends freely with Sarah is the best time he ever had. They start drifting closer to each other and kiss. William feels the true passion of love for the first time in his life and doesn't want to look back. When they return home, Julian orders William to continue studying as he has to give the entry test again. Sarah drops him at the university and promises to pick him up once the test is finished. While doing the test, William looks around the exam hall and feels like he doesn't belong here. He leaves the test incomplete and heads to meet Godwin. He wants to see the fossil from which his DNA was extracted. Godwin also tells him that the modern humans made up different beliefs and moral values, which forced the Neanderthals to live in an unfavorable environment and they eventually became extinct. William starts hating the other humans even more and heads to the lecture hall where his father is talking about Neanderthals once again. He is referring to William and lies to the students that William is proven to be as intelligent as other humans and earned a university degree. William gets up and reveals that it's all a lie. He says that his father should accept that his experiment failed, but in response, Julian says that William is the actual failure. This breaks the poor boy's heart, and he rushes out. Julian tries stopping his son but William clearly says that he doesn't want to be in a place where he doesn't belong. When Julian forcefully stops him, William pushes him away, but due to his extraordinary strength, Julian gets seriously injured. All the witnesses start shooting videos and call William a monster. Poor William runs as fast as he can and looks for a place to hide. Meanwhile, Sarah and Barbara are also looking for him. Almost a year has passed and the public doesn't know what happened to William. However, he impregnated Sarah who bears another Neanderthal child. It's time for William's species to rule once again.